Yes, it's just not doing what it should. I just put continue, I just pressed it, yeah. I get into trouble for fiddling with this, don't I? You did, yeah. Are you recording it? Yeah, you're so weak. <laughs> no, no, it's in a pair. here today um, just to come and see what we do. Which is quite nice. Yeah. Oh, it's good, it? oh yeah, it's got his bow on it. Dietary coming. Yeah. Give us give Dietary a minute. Hello Alistair. It's good to see you. It's a funny time because we're really out a lockdown, but not quite, aren't we? But has everyone been jabbed? Have you been jabbed, Martin? Right, jab twice. Have you been jabbed twice? Just jabbed once. Oh, we're, all, we're all vaccinated, actually. I was glad to hear that um, it covers this area as well. Yeah. Everyone should be done, I think. No, they can only have the Pfizer and the other one, the cheaper one. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live as we come to our morning prayer today. And I'm here at St. James. I've got an incredible bunch in front of me. It's lovely to see all their faces and uh, praise God for them. So um, things that are on this week, just to say that Holy Trinity, at the moment, we're not doing the 2 to 4 p.m. at Holy Trinity prayer. Um, it will be relaunched soon. It's just that we're rethinking it at the moment. Um, it's likely that we're going to do a little service up there in the afternoon eventually. So watch this space. Um, anyway, I'm going to wait for Paul to join me. He's always late, isn't he? <laughs> Good things are always worth waiting for. That's <laughs> <laughs> until midday prayer. <laughs> We'll wait for Laura now. <laughs> At 10 o'clock, it moves from one thing to another. So we go from morning prayer to midday prayer. And if we don't realize, we, we'll start um, doing the second part, which we've not looked at. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right, then. So the um, opening prayer. Let's have a, yeah, should we have a moment before we pray? Let's have a moment. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open by day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be, the, be your glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen.
Amen. We come to a time of confession. Let's just think of those things we want to hand over to Jesus today. Maybe those things we haven't trusted him with. Maybe those attitudes we wish we didn't have. Wrong thoughts, wrong words. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. By what I have done and by what I have left undone, I have not loved you with my whole heart, and I have not loved my neighbours myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me, that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is Luke 14, 1 to 24. One Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully, and behold, there was a man before him who was, had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited, when he noticed how they chose the places of honour, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honour, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. But everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid but when you give a feast invite the poor the crippled the lame the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just when one of these who reclined at the table with him heard these things he said to them Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at that time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servants, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the blind and the lame. And the servant, and, and the servant said, sir, what you commanded has been done and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of these men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a fantastic scripture, isn't it? And um, the things I pulled out of it, I'll start first, shall I, this time. I, the things I pulled out of it, um, um, was really looking at the very beginning where I was thinking about the Sabbath and the whole scripture is about who is your neighbor at the end of the day, isn't it? And it's very easy to get caught up in thinking, of course you'd get your son or your oxen out of the, if they fell down, but actually why wouldn't you also go and heal someone that you didn't know? Why wouldn't you show the love of God to your neighbor? Here we have the wisdom of Jesus again, don't we? The wisdom of Jesus, nothing like it is there. We are not meant to let the law get in the way of doing good. We're not meant to let the law get in the way of doing good. The law is supposed to help us. Um, help us. Um, rules are supposed to free us, not bind us. And so often we end up bound by things rather than freed, don't we? 
The Sabbath rule is to ensure that we look after ourselves. And if you think about that great commandment, love your neighbor as you love yourself, this is dripping with that, isn't it? It's there to help us to look after ourselves, to rest, to have time with God, to be nourished in order that we can live our lives, in order that we can um, make sure that we care for ourselves and we don't end up burning out. And it's important that we do that. That's what this is about. This is what the Sabbath is about. Because he says, doesn't he, <clears throat> the Sabbath is made for man. Man is not made for the Sabbath. We need time to rest. We need time with God. And that's what this is about. And that's the important part. If this rule or this law was used to stop using common sense and doing what was obviously good at that moment and needed at that moment, then we really have missed the point. We've become bound by law rather than freed by law. Seeing a need and responding is freedom when we understand the purpose of the Sabbath. Respond is it, responding is important. But then finding afterwards, of course, your Sabbath. Sabbath is made for us, like I say, and we are to make sure that we care for ourselves, that we take that time out. And Sabbath needs to be in place, but not to be a burden to us. It's supposed to be something that is glorious and wonderful for us. So if your ox or son was in a well on the Sabbath and you left them, I think personally what he's saying here is, You'd be pretty stressed by that. You'd be in anguish. There would be loss, maybe, even, and a lack of rest. It would cause the opposite, wouldn't it, if that was your son or your ox that was fallen down that well and you just left them. Shouldn't that be the case, actually, with our neighbor, or the person that lives next door to us, or someone that we've seen is in need? But actually, we still need to make sure we have our Sabbath on top of that as well. So here we are to be reminded that we are, must have our rest, but we also need to use our common sense and actually allow the law to free us, not to bind us. We are able to rest and praise God is important to nourish us. But don't let the law bind you, let it free you. Jesus brings us freedom and abundance. And care for your neighbor as you care for yourself. Paul, what did you find out of that scripture? Um, well, today we have two readings on banquets, one relating to humility and hospitality, and the other salvation. I feel led to look at verses seven to 11. Maybe God is saying to stop being proud before I can look at salvation. Here we have Jesus normally so merciful and compassionate easily upset by self-centeredness and hypocrisy. We are living in a world that values competition and success above everything else, occupying the place of honor above all else, where there is little space for the weak and for those who are unable to push themselves forward. I will try to listen to Jesus telling us that all who exalt themselves will, will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Is Jesus being petty or is he reminding us that we would do well to look at how we behave even in the small everyday things to discover what really lies in our hearts? We should ask him to give us light and freedom in our everyday dealings with others, especially in our competitive world. That's really good. And I think it's true, isn't it, that we can easily judge situations and not realize um, that we're judging it. So it's about questioning our own behavior, isn't it? And making sure that we keep everything in the right place. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Be humble. Yes. And we'll go a long way. And treat everyone as you wish to be treated, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Amen. Shall we pray? Amen. Dear Lord, thank you that you're our Lord and Savior. Thank you that you are with us in this journey. We ask that you pour your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us and to help us see the gifts that you have bestowed on us and help us to use those gifts in the right ways, not to boast, but to be humble, to serve, to help, to make a difference in our world, not to make a difference for ourselves. 
Help us to see how we can make a difference in our community. Help us to be able to see people for who they are, not what they look like. Help us to be a welcomer as they come into our Jim's Cafe today, to make a difference in their lives. Let us help us do your work, Lord, with a smile on our face, with actions, with words, and with love. Help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Lord, help us with all the things that you want us to do. You give us the energy, the strength, the common sense to know when we need to rest. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our nation. And we pray, Lord, at this time as we come out of lockdown for all those that are nervous, unsure, all those that have been affected mentally, emotionally, all those that have lost someone. And maybe this is their time for grieving. Help us to be conscious of each other, to give each other space, allow each other to speak as we need to speak. And Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help us to remember we are all neighbours and we are called to love each other as you love us. Help us to be conscious of the needs of those who, Lord Jesus, maybe are on their own, isolated as well, maybe afraid to come out now, but we may knock on a door or just make a difference somehow. We thank you for the miracles we've seen over this time, Lord. We pray, Lord, that our nation, there will be raising up Christians in politics as well. People who will proclaim your name. People who will really care what happens in our communities here. And Lord, help us in that. To be people, if it's somebody, if we are being prompted even to stand, Lord, help us to be prompted to hear your words, to stand, to make a difference in our community. And we pray, Lord, as we come back into the building here, that we won't forget the lessons learned, that we will be different, that we will seek to be a community and not just a place of meeting. Lord, by the power of your Spirit, work through us and in us. We pray, Lord Jesus, for those that are in difficult situations. And we ask by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will make a difference in their lives as well. And we think particularly of Anthony and Bryony. And I pray, Lord, now that you will provide that kidney for Anthony. And Lord, as he struggles... He gets weaker, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, by the power of the Spirit, that you will strengthen him, that he will see that there is a miracle and a God who loves him. And we pray for the family in that. To help us to be mindful of others that have needs. Pray for all asylum seekers. We thank you for the work that we're able to do here, Lord, and the privilege we have of meeting amazing people and seeing their lives changed. Help us to become more conscious of that. To imagine what it must be like to be displaced, away from your family. Away from what, all that you know, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be a welcoming place and welcoming people. And Lord, we pray as well for all those we know that are sick or struggling at this time. And in this moment, either say out loud a name if you want to, or in your heart, anyone that is on your heart. I particularly are praying for my friend Linda, for blessing on her, and ask for healing on her as well. I pray for Mike and the family. Pray for the Hope family, for Chris and Vicky. And 
Lord, bring healing in mind, body and spirit. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank God for who he is and his abundant faithfulness. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for God's rule and reign to become a reality. And give us this day our daily bread. Pray for God's daily provision in your life. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Confess your sins to the Lord and forgive people who have wronged you. And lead us not into temptation. Ask for God to guide you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And deliver us from evil. Pray for God's protection against any of the strategies of Satan. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let the earth glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters. All birds of the air, glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild and all the flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you all and remind with you, rem remain with you always. Amen. 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 I got tongue tied there. You did. I did. Bless you all and uh, good to see you on Facebook. I suspect Bob and Pam are there. So welcome to you. Another Bob might be as well. I'm not you sure. never know. Never know, but I say hello to you all anyway. And uh, God bless you all. And there was something else I was going to say and I've totally forgotten what. Never mind. You mentioned Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, it wasn't Sunday, it was something else, but anyway. Anyway, yes, Sunday, come on Sunday, 10.15 to church, 9.45 is? Kids church. There we go, that's it, and 4 o'clock, we have Holy Trinity on Sunday. Oh, it's the APCM, isn't it? APCM for Holy Trinity on Sunday, if you want to come up there at 4 o'clock, um, be a time of worship, Steve, Sinkty Steve is going to share a word and means we'll have a PCC, which is really exciting, isn't it? So God bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>